What is the $5,000 NASA Eclipse Challenge? Just call it yet another piece of smoking gun evidence that flat earthers can hang their hats on. Because everyone knows flat earthers always hang their hats on smoking guns. Or call this one of those daunting, disparaging, hidden in plain sight declarations that secret societies enjoy using to ridicule the unsuspecting masses. Or call it a miracle inspired by divine intervention or refined inspiration from divinity as a source point or just call it like it is and simply state NASA has provided absolute confirmation and uncontested categorical proof that a flat earth model is consistently used for the prediction and calculation of all past, present, and future eclipse events. Finally, something slightly more tangible pitting the cartoon world where globe models exist appallingly in prominence against the real world, we can actually see with our own eyes where the plainer truth lies right in front of us as these paradoxical facts come crashing down and collide with reality in biblical proportions, so to speak. The gravity of it all is approximately as daunting as the scientific theory of the same verbalization, gravity that is. Furthermore, NASA data provided for every single sun and moon positioning during an actual eclipse, fundamental for modeling and calculating every solar and lunar ecliptic event, past, present, and future, totally and categorically prove that the same data is not applicable and cannot be applied to a globe Earth model. Nothing even close to a sphere can support the numerical data NASA nonchalantly uses to describe eclipses, and nobody has ever thought to check. Until now. And in their totality, Sun, Moon, and Earth data provided by NASA, meaning the overall direction, orientation, and estimated distances, can only work on a flat Earth model precisely like a man-made gaming type used with CGI imagery that purely mocks the mathematical guys some people like to use as their primary defense mechanism of so-called reality. You know, the man-made reality stuff that the dynamic model taught in every classroom worldwide, apparently for the last 500 years or so, the model that miraculously justifies our theoretical universe, which all hinges on the assumed thousand mile per hour spinning globe near the equator, flying through space at 65,000 miles per hour Earth, in an expanding cluster of galaxies spreading all celestial matter outwardly in constant perpetual motion. Blah, 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 none of which has ever been scientifically proven or even remotely demonstrated in any true fashion. Scientific history is a tale of religion, where an idea of random, godless universe is the fundamental doctrine, worshipping a spinning sphere to justify the Principian Creed, and indeed shun any non-believers as heretics and yes, morons. But in actuality, the one model that can be physically demonstrated and proven beyond the shadow of any doubt, which in fact the shadows were the original claim which assumed the Earth to be a sphere in order to prove the Earth as a sphere, if you can actually believe that, is instead truly a stationary world on a relatively flat plane which dwarfs and indeed sustains the heavenly bodies. Whether that's under an intangible expanse beset by an electromagnetic, quote, firmament, quite likely the provable electromagnetic spaciously confined domain, or maybe something remotely more corporeal, such as a physical dome that may have material properties, although evidence for the latter is extremely flimsy at best, if not lacking altogether. This other conceptual model derived from Truman showmanship in a dome-like structure derived by self-proclaimed gateway drug lords among pinhead kingdoms in the gaming world, riddled with unfounded rhetoric, gobbled up and regurgitated if that rings a bell, hearkening back to the fancy old globe with assumptions and filling in the blanks with imagination and conjecture touted as fact, plopping out hordes of mindless repeaters who will defend their beliefs thanks to repetition, repetition, repetition. 
artificially created by popular demand, view counts plus hordes of parroting subscribers to that fictitious idiom that inexplicably mirror concepts until proven otherwise. Ergo, the placebo effect on steroids. Nevertheless, we are certainly static. The sky above doesn't appear to be. Not the point here, however. The real point of recent findings and conclusions of a detailed, in-depth investigation solely performed by an evaluation engineer with a BS and MS degree in civil engineering from two top ten accredited engineering programs at major universities who has also specialized in litigation-based projects while working as an engineer slash consultant as a lead fact-finding witness and project specialist that won many high-profile multi-million dollar cases by using a simple strategy apply the defendants primary evidence to conversely perjure their own testimony this smoking gun for all findings and conclusions was the pinnacle ta tactic used to reach a final verdict in a ward of judgment all unanimously uncontested in the plaintiff's favor. Furthermore, the person conducting this study worked for over 13 years directly under the principal uh, structural engineer and team leader who ultimately steered and ultimately misled the first on-site investigation after the collapse of the Twin Towers on September 11th, as well as the Oklahoma City bombing in 1995, amongst other historic events requiring opinions from so-called experts, whose credibility this writer began to scrutinize after the whole pancake theory, etc., any respect that might have supported my opinions of certain highly esteemed members of the architects and engineers community involved with official investigations has evaporated. It's important to impress that while this work association could be considered somewhat negative due to outrageous findings and conclusions of those who authored the infamous pancake theory, if personal credibility was to be factored into the equation, but using this case as an example where opinion and credibility are something that separate truth from theory, truth is the authority based only on facts, not authority neglecting or failing to use all the available facts just to sell the truth or a narrative under the guise of implausible rhetoric rather than deriving quantitative truth by numerical fact. One additional point to the argument that suggests credibility should be factored into this study, which it clearly isn't, all data used is available and can be reviewed online anytime. By anyone interested in substantiating the same claims, regardless of educational background or professional work experience. Although beneficial for developing the overall methodology used for the study's outline, by no means were advanced level mathematics or engineering solutions used to derive the results discovered, nor were they a significant factor in developing the final conclusions. Most graphical depictions demonstrate the lacking feasibility, not just the math. Yet, in the case of the globe Earth's testimonial lies and general hypocrisy, you know, the ones where only highly regarded, recognized, and prominent figureheads in astronomical sciences with a long-winded alphabetical supplement of credentials and certifications following their name like a whimsical paper trail to make their cocky point under duress while their names in the industry alone speak for any alleged credibility, the stuff imaginably required to substantiate any scientific and technical know-how considered necessary to support the globe as we know it. Only those with major false pretense need apply. Nevertheless, the study's aftermath is even more incriminating against the authoritarian promoting broad speculation and globe earth rhetoric. Again, the lone concept that's based entirely on unproven scientific assumption and CGI imagery, where presupposition replaces experiment and the fanciful imaginations of theoretical genius produce brilliant theorem which are undeniably contradictions of reality, pitiful and offensive to anyone skeptically analyzing reality. Their only defensive tactic is to mock and ridicule. Their offensive tactic is to create false arguments for the truth and then, you know, destroy those false 
straw man arguments. Heliocentrism also contradicts every perceptible fact to any truly objective, unbiased eyewitness testimony, which in its entirety is unbelievably disproportionate to every piece of observational detail and fact known to mankind. I beg anyone who believes they live stuck to the side of a spinning sphere to prove this otherwise, or stop perpetuating the madness by regurgitating the totally debunked, thoroughly disproven lies. If it looks like a flat earth, has the properties of a flat earth, and appears to be nothing else but flat and stationary, then it's not a spinning globe. The epicenter of this lie befalls on NASA and the likes. The ancient minds of ancient history, you know, prior to the knowledge of things like electromagnetism or even manned flight. But obviously, it takes a flat earth quack to wake some people up with resounding claims. Reiterating the novel and revolutionary conclusion, the only application of solar lunar data expressly provided publicly by NASA and NASA-supported websites among reference internet sites providing ecliptic data for all solar and lunar eclipses is only applicable on a flat Earth model. Period. End of story. Hypothetically, the dramatic ending for the globe theory is the ultimate act of God, where misleading characters act like experts, playing out their role as some articulate genius, but in fact land in the bucket labeled ignoramus overstating their artificial intelligence, repeating such drivel like nobody else's business but their own selfish image to promote. Conversely, in its totality, the comprehensive analysis used to define and support the aforementioned findings and conclusions, again, was no extraordinary feat, but an extremely straightforward exercise in geometric simplicity, which only utilizes the theoretical configurations developed historically for NASA's database on their own government-sponsored websites like timeanddate.com and eclipse.gsfc.nasa.gov. Again, that's eclipse.g as in gamma, s as in sam, f as in foxtrot, c as in charlie.nasa.gov. To repeat, NASA perjured globe evidence all by themselves. In this case, NASA did not contradict the flat Earth model, but proved it. Over and over, consistently and constantly. Equally so, this conclusion wasn't derived by some independent opinion based on skewed conjecture contrived for the benefit of obtaining favor favorable judgment by popular demand, nor was it subjectively analyzed in order for results to parallel biased viewpoints or parrot the silent minority who rely on others for their opinion. Suffice to say at this point, NASA has shot itself in defeat of its own purpose, with its own smoking gun evidence being used to kill the globe theory to boot. Irony is delicious, best served warm on a table that is flat and stationary. This evidence is purely fact-based, but not as obvious to the average person, or even seasoned experts apparently, unless some details are closely reviewed objectively. NASA has profiles for every solar and lunar eclipse on record. In their entirety alone, solar eclipses are schematically represented to show the impossible configuration of the Moon and Earth's positioning, with the totality signature of the Moon's shadow shown passing across the Earth's surface, highlighted in a manner that's impossible to recreate on a globe model. This is especially true when sun-moon positioning data for the same solar eclipse is observed and juxtaposed from different locations along the same approximate meridian line. A form of triangulation should point to one sun approximately 90 to 95 million miles away and one moon approximately 240,000 plus or minus miles away, but absolutely never do because they point away from each other and not towards two separate spheres in a celestial alignment. Um, just to give a quick understanding of what the celestial alignment should be is you have the earth uh, going around the sun on what is known as the ecliptic or the solar plane and although the earth is tilted at a uh, 
well, 23.4 degree angle from the vertical, 66.6 degrees from the horizontal, uh, the Earth does indeed go around this 